Welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Thousand Games. I'm your host, Gaming Jay, and today we're hopping into a true PlayStation classic. Metal Gear Solid 3... Oh, God, I got the hiccups today. Metal Gear Solid 3 Snake Eater. What's the, what's the trick when you have hiccups? You're supposed to, like, press your tongue to the top of your mouth, or is that when you have brain freeze? I can never tell. I usually just ba wait both out, because eventually they go away. Metal Gear Solid... One of the greatest PlayStation 1 games of all time. Metal Gear Solid 2, from what I've heard, everyone who's played it says pretty good. I don't know if it's as beloved as the first one, but the first one is just like, you know, uh, unmatched, basically. It's, it's, it's unmatchable, really. Um, but I have heard that Metal Gear Solid 3 here is a return to form. So I've long had it on my personal to play list, but I guess we're going to play a little bit of it here today. I'll see how far we... Snake versus monkey? The heck? <laughs> I'm kind of curious what that is, but I do want to start with a real game. Metal Gear Solid games are notorious for insanely long cutscenes. Even the first game had it. Even the first game had it. Um, so I don't know how long the cutscenes will be here. Um, I want to give them a little bit of a shot, but also, you know, uh, it, just basically the economics of what I do if I make a 20 or 30, 40 minute video, people will watch it. I make an hour video, the viewership goes down. I make a two hour video, it drops significantly. I make a three to five hour video, nobody will ever watch the thing. So, you know, you may wonder why I don't spend longer with each of these games and it's just sort of a, a practical, well, I mean, it's my own, my own time too. I don't have an infinite amount of time I'm trying to play a thousand one games. I've got to make some sacrifice here, people, but uh, yeah, anyway. Um, question. I'm playing the Metal Gear series for the first time. I like... Oh, this is interesting. I wonder if it's going to cater my control scheme to, um, to one of those games. I, I, I don't know. We're going to go on, uh, easy. Just, uh, so that, you know, things are easy on us here today, but, uh, I probably might play this on normal if I was playing it for real. Um... So, uh, Metal Gear Solid has always been a game about sort of geopolitics and stuff, and I've always sort of liked that element of it. I still view the first Metal Gear Solid as one of the best games of all time, I think, and I still like playing it, and I have always, always thought one of my other favorite games of all time is Batman Arkham Asylum. If you go and look at the gameplay of Arkham Asylum, I feel like it's patterned very closely off Metal Gear Solid. Um, it's obviously slightly different because you're Batman, but it has a lot of the same sneaking mechanics and stuff. And it is a similar story of being stuck on an island with a bunch of like crazy terrorist bosses and having to take them out one at a time and slowly unlocking more of the island. And with new abilities, you can go further into the island. It is basically the same game, but updated. And I think that's one of the reasons, I mean, I'm, I'm a huge Batman fan. I have a Batman tattoo for those of you who don't know. Um, but uh, I've, I, I've always thought in the back of my head that might be one of the reasons why I think Arkham Asylum is such a perfect game. It's not only Batman, but it draws inspiration from one of the best PlayStation 1 games of all time, which is Metal Gear Solid. So um, that's my own little... I don't know. I've never heard the developers come out and say that it's inspired by Metal Gear Solid 1, but maybe they do in an interview out there. I'd be really curious to know. Or maybe other folks uh, who've played Arkham Asylum have thought a similar thing. Or maybe it's just me. I don't know. <laughs> But uh, this game is a prequel, if I'm not mistaken, to the um, original Metal Gear Solid. This takes place in the 60s or the 70s, and I think you actually play as Big Boss, who, I mean, I guess spoilers, you know, if you haven't played Metal Gear Solid 1 or 3 by now, it's like a 30-year-old game, so spoilers, apologies, but this spoiler could vote if it could vote, all right? Actually, I guess it's a 22-year-old game. doesn't matter. It can drink, it can vote. It's probably got a long-term girlfriend at this point. Um, but your big boss, who uh, was used as a, a DNA to clone Solid Snake from the first Metal Gear Solid. So you kind of are Snake from Metal Gear Solid 1, but you're kind of his progenitor, big boss. It's the same person, but obviously with different life experiences. So there you go. So we're the first Snake... We're also known as Big Boss. Or I guess we become Big Boss later. That doesn't happen just yet. It's got a bit of a... What's that Will Smith movie? Where he fights a younger clone of himself. I think it was not... Uh, was not regarded too highly, but... Um, 
This game is so cinematic, I'm not even really paying attention to the story, but I mean, like, just the shots in it look so cinematic. I, you know what, I am, I am plumb shocked that they never, not yet, have turned Metal Gear Solid, the franchise, into movies. I mean, they've done it with, um, that Tomb Raider. Oh, they have done Tomb Raider as well, but, uh, Uncharted. They recently did Uncharted. I like the Uncharted series, but I didn't watch that movie, because I just... Sully was supposed to be old, and they cast Mark Wahlberg? This, it, 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 the casting of that didn't strike me as all that uh, faithful to the game. I don't know, maybe it's a great movie. Maybe I'm uh, being way too picky here. I'm being, being very prejudiced, right? I'm, I'm prejudging. That's the definition of prejudice, so... I mean, all this guy is doing is jumping out of an- well, all he's doing is jumping out of an airplane, but they've made it, like, so... interesting. And he's just showboating now, but I mean... You know. I mean, he's jumping out of an airplane, it's... pretty cool. I wonder if they could get Tom Cruise to play, uh, Solid Snake. I don't know how that would go down, if people would like it or not. Um, I don't know, I've gotten- I've oscillated on my opinion of Tom Cruise over the years. I mean, he's a- he's a crazy Scientologist, so sort of, probably in his personal beliefs, I disagree with the guy. But he's so damn charismatic, he can't help but like him, you know, like... I didn't want to like Top Gun Maverick, damn it, but I really did. It's a great movie. And I didn't even like the first Top Gun, so he just... I don't know, and in all the interviews you see with him, it's like he just exudes confidence and charisma. He's... You know, whether you agree with his his personal politics or views or Scientology or whatever, the guy is damn charismatic, so... You know, he- I think he could pull off a solid snake, I don't know. But, uh, that also might be a case of gross miscasting. Maybe you're listening to me suggest and think, Oh dear God, Jay, no, please, please, please not Tom Cruise. You have other ideas, I don't know. But, uh... But yeah, anyway, I, I think Metal Gear Solid is ripe for... I mean, there's all this political intrigue, the Soviets, and... Um, you know, I... I <laughs> I guess I always go back to Nazis, because they're just so damn fascinating. They're like the villains from Indiana Jones and Hellboy and all this stuff. It's like, Nazis can be whatever you want. They're like an evil uh, organization bent on controlling the world. I mean, Hydra from Captain America. But they're into, like, the supernatural and technology, all this stuff. They would be a great villain for Solid Snake, but I guess he came like 20 years too late. I don't know if he could do a Snake prequel that takes place in the 50s and he's hunting down like the remnants of like the Nazi uh, Empire or something like that, but I guess he's more suited to the 60s at the earliest fighting the Soviets. Anyway, I'm gonna jump ahead here. Um, you guys get the gist. There's a lot of political intrigue and background and stuff for this game. Most games I would just plumb skip every cutscene I could, but... I am actually drawn in by this extended parachute scene. It's it's quite interesting, actually. And this is the kind of thing you could do in Hollywood. I mean, it's not that complicated. It's just a parachuting, but... It's, uh... I mean, it's dragging on a little long. Uh, I'm still sort of fighting off a cold, so if I sound a little stuffy or I'm sniffling, that's what I'm doing. Oh, look, you can press R1 to look. That's cool. I like how they're, like, mixing a cutscene with, like, background info. I would love to skydive, but I, f I feel like I'm too old to do it. I think, it, oddly enough, when I was younger, if I did it and something went wrong and I died, it would feel less... I mean, I don't want to. I don't want to die. The, my fear of death is preventing me from skydiving. But for some reason, it feels like when I was younger... I didn't have, like, a family and kids and all that stuff. It felt like, yeah, I could skydive. Oh, well, if, <laughs> if you die, then oh, well. But now it sort of feels like, well, I got a career and all sorts of stuff going for me. I don't want to skydive now. Maybe, maybe if my life takes a turn, I got nothing to live for, then I'll skydive. But, uh, no, that's, that's a very dark thought. Um, I don't know. I just, I feel like I kind of outgrew the window where I would have been willing to skydive. And now I'm sort of like a, in the no skydive camp. I'm too old for it. It's like a, it's, it's just an unnecessary risk. I think. Even though I'm sure it would be pretty safe. I mean, people do this all the time. This army guy is doing it. Snake. So, hold on. There's Solid Snake is from the first game. There's Liquid Snake was his clone brother enemy. 
And I think this guy is Naked Snake. If I'm not mistaken. That's his code name. Which, I mean, I know they didn't do this. I, I actually looked this up a while back. I know they did not come up with the name Solid Snake and Naked Snake to be kind of like, you know, a, a sexual innuendo joke. But I mean, come on. Like, that's like the... <laughs> they... You know what? It strikes me as a very Japanese thing to do. To name your characters that and have these, like, names that are, like, really weird when you translate them to English. But yeah, Solid Snake and Naked Snake. Make of it what you will, folks. But it was not intended that way. So get your minds out of the gutter. David Hater. He does, he does an amazing snake voice, I, I will say. Like, like, Snake's voice is iconic. I believe. And that's one area where I think Tom Cruise might not be able to pull it off, is I don't know if he has the right voice for it. Anyway, let's see what's going on on the comms. You copy. You're already in enemy okay, we're in enemy territory. Our code name for this mission will be Naked Snake. I'll be referring to you as Snake from now on. You're not to mention your real name. Uh, you don't like snakes. What do you mean? You've eaten one before, haven't you, in survival training? A lot of people think Snake was named after Snake from Escape from New York, but I think uh, from what I read, they selected it just because snakes are, like, dangerous and badass, you know? Uh, I'll be Tom. Call me Major Tom. Naked Snake to Major Tom. Uh, you must not be seen by the enemies. Leave no trace of your presence. That kind of infiltration is the Fox unit specialties. In other words, weapon equipment... Um, uh, I suppose calling me Snake was your idea of a joke. Now, there's a good reason for that. I'll tell you later when the time is right. I'll uh, find medical supplies in your backpack. About your backpack, I lost it in a tree on the way down. Well, you better get it back then. Do you know where it is? No problem. I can see it on a branch. Climb a tree, stand in front of a tree, and press the action button. I'll be monitoring your progress. My frequency is 140.85. If you need to talk to me, use the send function. Okay, Snake, go get your backpack. Your first mission, get your backpack. Intense stuff, boss. All right, let's check out the buttons here. There's punch. Yeah, there's like roll and stuff. One of these is grab. Oh, and there's first person view. I feel like we're in the predator jungle, like of Nicarag Nic Nicaragua. Survival knife. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's an RC mate? Balanced nutrition. Oh, these are like uh, the food. The rations. Okay, somewhere around here is my backpack. See if we can find it. Uh, can I crawl under here? Yes, I can. I'm <laughs> crawling in reverse for some reason. That's all right. Hopefully when I get to where my backpack is, it will tell me. Oh, there it is. Okay. So, what's my action button? No, that crawls. Nope, stand up, snake. That's not it. There it is. Okay, so it's triangle. This is not how I would have chosen to do this. I would have just hung on to the branch. Oh, we got the backpack. Yeah! Alright, I guess he's very good at balancing. He wanted to be acrobatic about it and walk on the branch. I used to love climbing trees as a kid. To equip a weapon, it's necessary to take out your backpack. Now I think it would be scary if you had a kid to watch them, like, climb up a tree. Because it's, like, pretty high and they could fall and really hurt themselves, but I would... There were two trees in my grandma's house and... Me and my cousins knew how to, like, climb to, like, the first branch, which was probably, like, eight feet tall. Like, it was above our parents' heads by a few feet, which is, like, crazy to think about. Um, for other equipped, just do the same thing. Got it. Use a survival viewer. Survival is fundamental to this mission. After you've been out in the field for a while, your stamina will start to drop if your stamina gets too low. Yeah, I heard about this. So, in this game, you actually have to worry about, like, survival. So, it's a little more complex than the previous... Snake. Keep an eye on your stamina. Cover last stamina. You can hunt local flora and fauna. You can either tranquilize uh, your dart or knife to hunt. The only weapon is the M Mark 22 Hush Puppy. 
<laughs> That's right. It's been fitted with its own suppressor. Why would you need a suppressor and a tranquilizer gun? Are they that loud? Once its durability reaches zero, the noise suppression effect is gone. I imagine, like, tranquilizer guns in, like, the 60s are, like, these massive things that make, like, a huge... It's like a cannon exploding when you fire one. Because you think about, like, what cell phones were like in the 80s. It was like holding a brick to your ear. So what would a gun, a tranquilizer gun in the 60s be like? Be like a bazooka. Tranquilizing bazooka. It doesn't even fire, like, a dart. It fires a rock that knocks the guy out. It's tranquilizer slash blunt force trauma. Hush puppy. Mark 22. I'm afraid you've been given a fake death pill for that purpose. Um, tape it to your body so you can take it when you need to. Use it if you're taken prisoner by the enemy. I send you to a state of false death for a short time, fooling them and thinking I'm already dead. Uh, just take the revival pill. You mean that thing you put my tooth? That's the one. Oh, interesting. So you can take a false death pill? That's crazy. I don't know if the CIA ever actually issued cyanide capsules. From what I've heard, that's not true. I don't know if the, the KGB might have, because they're crazy. But I don't know. May, maybe it's just a Hollywood fiction. Maybe it's real. If you know that it's real, I would love to hear that. So fascinated by uh, that stuff. I watched a YouTube video once about like an ex-FBI disguise master. They talked about all these things about like wigs and sunglasses and all sorts of stuff. Uh, well, this guy's going on. Hello, Snake. I am paramedic. Nice to meet you. Paramedic? As in a medic who comes in by parachute? <laughs> Not an actual paramedic. Okay. Anyway, on and on they go. We will save my game. I'm not going to save my game. If we die, we die. That's how we roll. We're playing on easy, so it probably should be okay. I wonder if you meet any of the Fox team from the first Metal Gear Solid in this game. Like if you meet Sniper Wolf or Psycho Mantis or anything like that. It'd be cool that you meet them, even if they're like teenagers or something. Um, sort of see the, the prequel of where the first Metal Gear Solid came from. Holy Jesus, this is going on for a while. All right, I hope nothing important's in this dialogue. It's a whole interesting, complex conversation. All right. <clears throat> there was something about taking a poison pill and making it look like you died. But we're just going to figure that, that whatever it was that they needed to tell us, it wasn't all that essential. Okay. All right, I'm just trying to figure out the buttons so I know like how to shoot and stuff when the time comes. The Dremuchij Swampland. Are we in Russia? I guess we're in Russia. We have a what? What is that? A sound meter? Five percent? Ten percent? I don't know what that is. There were bugs and stuff. Reminding me of, like, Survivor Man or something. Oh, I'm sinking into the mud. I didn't re I thought this was a clearing. I didn't realize it was mud. Oh, no, we're going down! Oh, there's a crocodile right there, man. Oh, God! <laughs> I drowned in a swamp! Wait. Is there... Is there any kind of, like, quick save? Thing that I literally just screw it up. Okay, thankfully. I mean, I'm glad we're getting into games that are a little more modern that have things like quick saves, but that is hilarious. He survives a whole parachute drop into the the sw the the jungle or whatever, and then just stands in a swamp until he drowns. Oh my god, there's a crocodile right over here too. I think he's gonna eat me. He's probably going to eat me. Oh, God. No, he didn't! Jesus, my guy has balls of steel. I'll tell ya. In real life, if there was a crocodile, I would not go anywhere near that thing. I can't believe in Florida people walk around. There's just crocodiles hanging out on golf courses and parks and stuff. I wouldn't leave the house, man. If I walked out... If I walk outside and I see a snake, I'm like, that's too much for me. You know? Like, I, I don't want... I, like, I, 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 I second guess... The path I've chosen to walk on. 
if I go for a hike or something. If I saw an alligator, they're like baby dinosaurs living in our time. It's they shouldn't be here, you know. Like, have you seen eleven twenty two sixty three and uh, Jake goes uh, back in time and then like all these sort of time itself is like you shouldn't be here. That's what I say to alligators. They literally shouldn't exist. There's some KGB troops, though. And grenades. AK-47s and nades. Let's see. Snake, your presence in the Soviet territory is already a violation of international law. We can't let the Kremlin find out that the CIA and American government are involved. Contact with the enemy is strictly prohibited. Um, that's right. Uh, the point of this mission is to sneak through their jungle without being seen. The success of this mission, uh, the uniform option lets you pick your uniform, while the face option lets you change your face paint. Using camouflage, it blends in with your surroundings. Oh, interesting. If you stand up and run around like an idiot, you're bound to be spotted, but if you crawl instead, you should be able to sneak by. The yeah, effect of the camouflage is by looking at the camo index. Uh, well, your camouflage blends in with the surroundings. The higher the value, the harder you are to spot. You to make yourself one with nature. Oh, that's cool. Okay, let's give this give this puppy a try here. Okay, so it's the camouflage meter that I'm seeing over there. Alright, so 45%. Let's see. Fake death pill. Espionage pill developed by the CIA can fake death temporarily. Use with the O button. Um, okay, so hold on. Where's my... Directional microphone that can pick up small sounds. Picks up sounds in the pointed direction. That's cool. How do I... No, it's not what I want. Uh, oh, here we go. Camouflage. Oh, I'm so used to X being select. Because X is where the A button is on an Xbox controller, but it's O. Okay, face. Let's go with Woodland. Then uniform. Tiger stripes. How about squares? That's fun. That's a very pixelated one. Uh, we'll go with leaf. I like how it tells you if it's going to give you like plus. Oh, we could. Wait. Nudity. He still has his pants on. That's not. That's not naked. You don't know what true nudity is. All right. So, I wish I could see a map of where we're trying to go here. So we're 70, so this little, uh, this dude sort of belly crawling his way across the battlefield. 75, 80% chance he cannot be seen. Oops. I don't think there's anything over there. Keep going here. What is this wire that's dangling above me? Right, let's see what's going on over here. I wonder if I can, like, crawl inside this. Oh, well, you can. Bung juice. Oh, bug juice. Read that weird. I'm gonna try going over this way, too. Nothing. Okay, so I guess I gotta go forward. 85%. Camouflage. 90%. It's pretty good. Oh, down to 65. 10%? Okay, I guess I should just walk if it's 10%. Oh, negative 15. Okay, so crawling is always better. It's all it's alternating between the first person and the third person crawl, like beyond my control. Like I can't stop it. Okay, is there anything? Whoops, stand up. Anything over here? Gonna try crawling. The problem is I can't see very far, so I have no idea if there's even enemies around that I should, uh... Guess I can... What's my first person mode? Yeah, there's there's nobody around. I, I don't know why I'm crawling around. There's literally nobody. Yeah, like, not a soul. I'm, I'm camouflaging... Oh, shit! All radio. Snake, do you see? 
tufts of grass kind of grass just ordinary grass you should check it anyhow pretty thick about waist high you can crawl on the grass you can advance your cover when the camera use your view okay he's just telling me hide in the grass okay out no stand up so you fool they're like there's a grass man running around Oh, okay. Turns out this whole hiding in the grass strategy really sucks. <laughs> Stand up! Go! <laughs> Jesus Christ! Snake! My friend! I got a stun grenade. I'm, hi I'm just hiding by this log. That'll do it. Oh, here they come. Try and crawl my way out of this. Okay. Oh god, how did they not spot me, by the way? This is turning into- this is turning into a regular gaming day disaster. So the, the kind- of, this is what you- you would expect. Oh, there's another guy right over here, and another guy. Okay. See, this is the kind of thing where I wish I could, like, actually... Okay, we just ran through. Whatever. The kind of thing where I wish I had, like, forward vision, I could see what's in front of me, because I'm kind of running around like an idiot, with no idea of, like... Oh, God. It's not gonna move. This strategy is poorly thought out. I will say these guards are not the brightest. They're doing a very poor job of apprehending me. I'm just gonna run for it, you know what? <laughs> Whoa! Ah! I pressed the wrong button! Maybe that river will carry me to safety? No, it killed me. These guards are not the brightest. I will grant you I'm a moron. But they're dumber than me. Alright, well at least it respawns you. With the alert off. Okay. What what I really appreciated about the first Metal Gear is that you had, like, the little radar that showed you where the enemies were. Without it, this is way harder. This is like, uh, I think on the harder difficulties, you lost your radar in Metal Gear Solid. But this is like, you literally just don't have one because it was the 60s. We'll say sneaking is rather tedious. See, this is why I like the Batman Arkham games, because, like, they did have sneaking, but it was much faster to pull off. Sucker! Oh, there's guys here! Whoa! Oh! Climb! Oh my god, that guy fell asleep and fell to his... <laughs> He's gonna be pissed when he wakes up. I wish I could break the bridge, like, Indiana Jones style. Shit, there's guys everywhere, man! This is too crazy! I'm just running for it. It turns out I lose more health and cause more, like, awareness of my presence if I try to sneak. If I just fuck it and run by all the people, then I'm much better at stealth. <laughs> when I'm not being stealthy, I'm better at stealth. I do a better stealth mission. So that's how I do. Nobody knows I'm here. The Soviet government has no idea there's somebody else in the woods. The perfect assassin. I've reached the abandoned factory where Sokolov is supposedly being held. Alright. Sokolov is inside the factory. They should be holding him in a room in the northeast section. Your objective... Whoops. What was that objective? I kind of skipped it. Uh, be careful. Your mission is to bring Sol Solkov back alive. He was not being exposed to any kind of danger. Do not approach Solkov while in the alert phase. One more thing, Snake. You mean there's more? No. It's just when you get Solkov, I want you to tell him something from me. Sorry for being so late. Yes. Okay. Okay, we actually have to try here and be stealthy. Let's see how this goes. 
Okay, there's a guy right over there. I like how this patrol guard is looking towards the building he's protecting. He's not looking at the area where somebody would be coming from. He's casually, like, walking around. Okay. I'm gonna see. I think you can just grab these guys. Guess not. I'm just running for it. Oh god. The guy in here. Fuck, he saw me. Stand up, you fool! The, the stand- the stand button is actually very annoying. An LF med. Maybe I'll just beat up the whole camp. That might be my version of stealth. So to go in Jackie Chan style and just... wreck everyone? Surely they won't find me in here. Ah, you bastards. Alright, this is why I wish I had a gun. Let's start killing them. There you go. Come on, one at a time, let's do this. There you go. Anyone else want to come in? There's nobody in this room, you better come see! I think I'm regenerating health. Yeah, yeah, yeah! Slice you up. Anyone else? Oh yeah, there's nobody over here, buddy. Oh, they threw a grenade at me. Slice that guy up too. There we go. Straight up murdered them all. That's how you turn off an alarm. I guess I'm just literally terrible at the stealth unless I have the Metal Gear Solid One radar. Because, again, like, if you're going in this direction, you cannot see if there's a guy in front of you. you just, it's just surprise, you've been detected. Anyway, I don't think we have to worry about stealth or evasion anymore. It's all cleared out. It's all fine. Oh, there's a guy right up there. Look at that guy. Let's wait till his guard is down. We're, we're gonna slice him up. We're slicing and dicing everybody. We'll leave no survivors. Let's wait till he comes down. Prey on him in the shadows. They think they think I ran out into the woods. They're gonna pursue me. Guarding the stairs for some reason. Don't listen to the footprints on the stairs. Oh my god, I... Jesus. Gotcha, buddy. <laughs> Ooh, bullets. Who's that? Oh, wait. Shit. I got that guy too. Alright. I will actually stay hidden in the bushes here for a second. I guess staying hidden in the bushes here is sort of like the equivalent equivalent of like just a box. Somebody is like calling HQ. Eliminate all enemies. Oh god. Ah. Uh, staying in the bloody f trees so that he wouldn't see me. Where'd he go? No reports to patrol, buddy. Just slice and dice you. Alright. 
It's like, well, we've lost total control with the, or total, uh... We, we've lost communication with the, with the factory. I guess it's all fine. They would definitely call if something was going wrong. Alright, northeast. Which way is northeast? Wait, this, can I climb this? Yeah. There we go. I think we're in the northeast corner, although I have absolutely no idea. Really. This would be a good place to get a vantage point. If one didn't want to be caught. That's pretty cool. Poof. Okay, I think he's in a built in a room somewhere around here. I actually was sort of running around here, not paying attention to where I was going. Oh, there we go. This is the door. It's safe! We've murdered everyone. Well, so much for the Soviets not knowing a CIA guy was involved. How are we going to explain the, the body bags that are going back to Russia? Hey, what's going on? You know, Metal Gear's sort of central theme is that you constantly encounter Metal Gear, which is a giant mech. I wonder if there is a Metal Gear in this game, because it takes place in the 60s. Like an early prototype mech. Get it from me. No. I'm a CIA agent. I'm here to save you. To the other side of the Iron Curtain. Your CIA? Yeah. I was sent by Major Zero, the man who got you out two years ago. Zero? I have a message from him. What is it? He said to tell you sorry for being so late. <laughs> Did he now? What does it mean? It means he's a man of his word. But we've got no time for this. You have to get me out of here before they arrive. Who's they? Colonel Volgin of Gru. You in the West know him as Thunderbolt. Was he a supervillain? How does he have these crazy, these crazy names? He's a member of the army's extremist faction, a man who seeks to seize control of the motherland. Ever since the Cuban Missile Crisis two years ago... It is interesting how they mix, like, real historical records with the game. Like, this, this period of time is so fascinating. Anyway, um, I'm just gonna skip it for time, but, uh... Metal Gear Solid and their use of historical footage. It's a thing. <clears throat> this guy's totally gonna get assassinated. I'm expecting, like, the ninja guy to appear, unstealth, kill him, and then run away. My guy to go, huh? No injuries. Good work, Snake. Now hurry up and get Alright. Lost contact with the boss some time ago. Oh! Who is the boss? I thought I was Big Boss, but I guess there's the boss. I am really curious about the plot of this. I do kind of wish it was a movie, to be honest. Um... As much as Metal Gear Solid 1 was, like, one of my favorite games, there's a few things to this I can see that are going to cause me problems and uh, make it really a harder, more tedious game for me. And I'm not sure if I would sit and play through this all, but I'm very curious about the plot, so. I would love to see, like, a buddy cop thing now with, like, me and, like, Mr. Nazi here. Nazi scientist man. Like, you know a guy with a monocle... A scientist with a monocle and, like, a black jacket. He's got to work for the Nazis. What is he doing? Is he trying to use, like, psychic powers? I'm confused by this man. Hey, buddy, don't worry. I, I literally killed everyone. Oh, except that guy. He's about to kill scientists, man, isn't he? Oh, no, there's a bunch of them. It's an ambush by the treacherous Russians. Kill him, Snake! I guess they got us dead to rights. Does not bode well for... Scientist Man. Oh. What, is this Revolver Ocelot? Huh? 
last. What the heck? And why is he, he has such a tiny gun, it's not intimidating at all. Spetsnaz. Huh. What's a crew soldier doing here? Soldier? He's the Ocelot Commander. Is that Revolver Ocelot? Major Ocelot to you. Like, he was just like flexing in front of his men. Oh, you call me Major Ocelot. Unless you want to get in major trouble. Sokolov is ours. Now get out of here. An Ocelot never lets his prey escape. What? <gasps> Oh, damn. Ah! 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 This has got to be Revolver Ocelot, right? <laughs> I really- I, I- I'm gonna have to go and read the- the plot of this game afterwards. I know I'll, like, spoil it, but I- It'll take me years before I get back to actually play this, if I ever do. But yeah, I, man, like, a movie franchise, I swear. Also, I have to say, with a tiny little pistol like that, the revolver spinning tricks are less impressive. For some reason, they're cooler when you have a big revolver. Like a cannon of a revolver, they're more interesting. So, he's a Russian commander who really likes cowboys and fancies himself a, sh a sharpshooter. He's got a bit of a thing for ascots. Don't you know? I mean, I have to, like, see this cut scene through, because I just need to know what happens. Rad, even if it is for the Gru. <gasps> Sokolov, take cover. Shoot him, Snake! What are you waiting for? Huh. Shoot him! <laughs> are you? What is happening here? Oh, now there's just a second group of, uh... of Soviet soldiers ready to kidnap me. So we traded one standoff for another. Huh. That gun. <laughs> <laughs> If you're not the boss, then die. Oh, the bullet snagged. How did I do that? Did he mess up or did I do that to him? I don't even know. <laughs> that guy's totally dead. Leave it. Shoot the other one. Whoa. Oh, I like how I still have the Trank gun. I forgot I don't have a real gun. Get him! Can't believe nobody is shooting me. It's crazy. And why am I not shooting this guy? Shoot him! Shoot him in the eyeball with a tranquilizer. I mean, it's sort of impressive and sort of like they have so many opportunities to shoot me in the face or I could shoot them, like... He's like, whoa, whoa. Oh, he's been tranked. I see. I guess I didn't shoot them because I only have a tranquilizer gun, so... My gun would hit them and they'd be like, I've been tranked. They would shoot me and kill me before my, uh, thing, uh, you know. The tranquilizer takes effect. Shoot him! Shoot him in the neck with a tranquilizer, man. You ejected the first bullet by hand, didn't you? I see what you were trying to do. But testing a technique you've only heard about in the middle of battle wasn't very smart. You were asking to have your gun jam on you, huh? Besides, I don't think you're cut out for an automatic in the first place. You tend to twist your elbow to absorb the recoil. That's more of a revolver technique. Oh! <laughs> So 
So I was the one who told him to use a revolver. Before me, he was just a regular old ocelot. He has yet to become ocelot revolver. Was some fancy shooting. You're pretty good. Pretty good. <sighs> Interesting. I mean, I do like how it connects. You know, I'm not a huge prequel guy, but I feel like I do like how this is connecting to the first Metal Gear Solid. Um, the guys were after Solikov, a Gru Colonel, something between the KGB. Catch him and find him. Alrighty. Well, I think this is as far as we're going to go here today. Spent about three quarters of an hour here chasing this scientist, killing some Soviets, met Ocelot Revolver. I mean, I completely understand we've but dipped our toes into Metal Gear Solid 3 here. But I have to say, so control-wise and stuff, I feel like Metal Gear Solid 2 did mix up the controls from number one a bit more. I seem to recall like first-person shooting and stuff. This seems a little more true to the original Metal Gear Solid, and I do kind of like that. I wonder if I had selected uh, that I had played Metal Gear Solid 2 if the control scheme would have changed. I don't 100% know, but frankly, I like the Metal Gear Solid 1 control scheme, so I don't mind it. The, my only complaint is with limited first-person uh, vision, it's really hard to do the stealth parts. I w almost would have preferred an over-the-shoulder camera, so you are kind of like see more of what's in front of you. Metal Gear Solid 1, I guess I'm realizing, because I had the radar, um, that wasn't as big of an issue. But I definitely remember it was a thing where, like, if you're facing like this towards the camera, you have no idea what's in front of you. At least if you're facing like this, you can see, like, far into the distance. But here, like, what's in, let's, what's in front of my guy towards the camera? No idea. There could be a guy standing right there. I wouldn't even know, and I just walk into him like an idiot. So, stealth without the radar is very hard. Um, I guess you get used to it probably. I like the sort of like other things they've added in, like the camouflage is interesting. I find hiding in the grass does jack all. I can never make it work. I just get caught instantly. I miss my box, if I'm being frank. Um, but uh, yeah, it does seem like I know people have told me you have to like, you know, kill animals and eat the food and run around the jungle and stuff. So it's like that stuff does sound kind of interesting. Um, so I think like if I were to play more Metal Gear Solid. I don't know, it's a toss-up, because I never really got into number two. Because um, even though it continued number one, like it, they just tried to make it, I think, a little too different, and it just didn't click with me. Um, and so this one feels like a bit of a return to form, but there's a few things missing that I really like. So I don't know. I might, like, if I'm being totally honest, I think I would just go back and play number one. But uh, I am very curious about the story. I wish they made a movie. I'm going to go read about the plot because I really am just curious and how this all plays out now. But uh, maybe that's sacrilege, but who knows. Guys, what do you think about Metal Gear Solid um, Snake here? Uh, is it a game that you played back in the day? Metal Gear Solid 3 Snake Eater. Is it a game you played back in the day? Do you love it? What do you love about it? And if you go deeper into the game than I've gone here today, like... What happens? How how does it continue and proceed? Uh, what aspects of it end up being really cool? Let me know in the comments down below. And as always, whatever you think of the game, hopefully you had some fun here today. If you did, subscribe to the channel, all that good stuff. And other than that, folks, I will catch you in the next one. So until next time, my friends, you take care of yourselves. Keep your snakes naked and solid. <laughs> oh, God. can't believe I said that. And peace.